Hey hey guys, Steven here and welcome back to another first look and unboxing video and today we have here the number one S6 Plus. So this is a clone from the Galaxy S6, should almost be a one to one clone with updated chipset, so 64 bit support, kinda cheap, 150 euro over at efogshop.com, you can find a link down below in the description. Actually I've said I'm done with clones because they sometimes get stuck at customs but not this one here because there is no logo on there and the quality also seems to be better than the usual um, Samsung clones. Okay, um, then check out the link down below and now I would say let's get directly started and let's have a quick look at the new specs. Alright, so here you can see the specifications. It runs Android 5.1 straight out of the box, the so real Android 5.1. The system on chip is the MTK MT6735. Not sure about the frequency, but I guess 1 GHz. It's in quad core 64 bit. You can see all the frequencies listed there. B20 is also in there, so 800 MHz. We have a 5 megapixel front facing camera and 16 megapixel rear camera. Then it comes with a 5.1 inch HD display, so not the best display, but it should be quite sufficient. 1 GB of RAM and 16 GB gigabytes are from. Doesn't say anything about the battery capacity, but I will definitely measure that in the full review. So let's get directly started and let's do the unboxing. So guys, there we go, here comes the package, as you can see, nice and small, so let's open it up and there we go. First of all, here at the top we have the smartphone coming in such a protection sleeve, nothing special here, but as we can see at the first look, this really looks a lot like a Galaxy S6, and yeah, there is no branding on there, so just a Galaxy S6 without logo. Okay, let's put it beside and let's have a closer look at the accessories before we have a closer look at the phone, and here we have some cardboard material and, well, here the accessories. So it looks really like thrown into the box, not really lovely, but first of all, um, here we have the micro USB charging cable also comes here with such a paper thing around it, some paper wrap just like the original one and it also looks a bit like the original cable but yeah there is no branding anywhere on the cable. Okay um, the next thing is the user manual Okay, completely white. Oh well, <laughs> wrong side. User manual. Okay, then let's have a look at that. So, oh this is so far as I can see it's English only and there's a lot of crap in there. So basically the camera include, whoa, I can't even read that crap. Okay, so let's have a look at the charger. I'm pretty excited because um, the chargers you get from AliExpress if you buy clones with logo are usually really kind of bad. And I have a charger tester and in the full review we'll have a look at that. Um, as I can tell here by the font and everything on there, it really looks like a cheap charger. So the output is 5.3 volts, okay. Um, um, 1000 milliamps, 1 amp, 5.3 watts, but well, every charge outputs a bit more than 5 watts, uh, 5 volts, sorry. Um, here you can see the um, connectors, a power socket connector for my country, European one, I don't have to use an adapter, that's great, so thanks Efox. And here we have two SIM opener pins, so you get two of them, cool thing, actually you just get one, or maybe that was a fail and you should actually get one, but there are two inside of the package. I don't know, but that's everything you can find inside, nothing more included, so just the basic accessories, a useless manual and the phone itself. So now I would say let's have a closer look at the phone. As you may know, I also have a Galaxy S6 Edge and I want to compare this clone a little bit to the S6 Edge. Now they may look very similar, so unfortunately I don't have a normal S6 to compare it with. But well, there are many many differences. First of all the build quality, now the buttons, it feels a little bit strange. Then the display, um, yeah the display is the biggest difference as I would say, um, 2K versus HD. And also the colors and viewing angles, it does not look really good, but it's also very cheap. So it's a fifth of the price of the Galaxy S6 Edge. So I would say let's get directly started, I will give you a quick walkthrough and we'll just compare some things to the real deal, so to the Galaxy S6 Edge. So guys, let's get directly started. Here we have the Galaxy S6 clone and as you can see it really looks a lot like a Galaxy S6 but there are many many differences. First of all the internal hardware. This is a non-branded version, so there is no number one logo on there, there is no Samsung logo on there, which is pretty good for custom reasons. Okay, um, first of all let's get started here with the front side. You see the front side looks very similar, but there are many differences. I want to get started with the display. The display, it's an HD resolution display, um, it's now on maximum brightness, so it's not really the brightest one I've seen. The um, sharpness is okay, but the colors and viewing angles could be a little bit better, but it's not really the worst display I've seen. So it's not a high-end panel, but quite okay. There's a black bar around the display, very small, bezels just like on the real one, 5.1 inches. Then at the bottom we have capacitive touch buttons, so they're very responsive right now and the vibration feedback feels way better than on the clones I've had before. In the middle we have a home button, but this is just a mechanical home button without any um, additional features, so there's no fingerprint scanner on this clone. 
Okay, at the top we have the front-facing camera. Now, um, yeah, you see the lens looks quite big, but the lens um, inside is actually smaller, so um, it's just a little bit more to look like the Galaxy S6, but the camera um, is not really that good. In the middle we have the earpiece, which is quite okay. Then here we have light and proximity sensor, and on the left side we also have um, the notification LED, which is multicolor and works pretty good. Okay, so um, let's talk about the frame. Now the build quality of the frame feels just like the real deal, so um, really good actually. Um, there are no sharp edges or something like that, and that's good. But the buttons, um, we have here on the right side, for instance, the power button, and on the left side we have um, the volume rockers up and down, and it feels a little bit strange because they're just sliding slightly up and down, and if you shake the phone you hear a little bit that the buttons are a little bit wobby, so a little bit loose, and um, this gives gives it a not really premium feeling. So this is also a dual SIM phone, that means we have here two SIM card slots as you can see, that's a pretty good thing. Um, I'm pretty sure that are two SIM card slots and not one micro SD card slot, but we'll check it out when we open it up. Then here at the bottom of the frame, as you can see, we have the 3.5mm headphone jack, the bottom microphone, then here the micro USB port and here the speaker. The speaker on the real S6 Edge is really premium, but here I guess um, it will be kind of crappy. Okay, now let's have a look at the top side of the frame. Here we have the IR blaster, which is working, and also here we have a top microphone. Okay, last but not least, the back side. And the back side, it's made out of glass. I have already dismantled a couple of those clones, and the glass breaks um, easily. Now, I'm not really sure how it is on this one here, but on some other clones the glass came off because it's just glued with some adhesive tape to the back and when you heat it up it came a little bit off. Here on this one it looks actually kind of good, so maybe they're using some different kind of glue. I've heated it up a little bit with an hair dryer and it did not um, come up so far, so that's a pretty good thing. And here at the bottom also as you can see there is no branding, there's just something like FCC, um, C certification. Not really sure if, if it's a real one, but well, um, at least there's something on the phone. Here we have um, the heart rate monitor, as you can see, this should actually work, but um, I can't really tell you if the numbers I get out from that um, are really correct. Then here we have the single LED flash, so also looks okay. And here we have the rear camera, which comes, uh, I think, a little bit more out of the device than on the real one, at least than on the S6 Edge. The lens here and the camera model looks kind of big, but it doesn't really tell us too much about the camera, so I will have to check it out in the full review. Okay guys, so that was just a quick walkthrough, what you can see here is just from the quality seal and that's basically it. So that's the phone here from the outside and now I would say um, let's have a closer look here at the TouchWiz fake here on the number 1S6. So ladies and gentlemen, the phone is now up and running and yeah, um, it's running Android 5.1, 64-bit support and we have here that fake TouchWiz, so it really looks a lot like TouchWiz, actually I absolutely hate that look. We can go here to the menu and here we have settings, so let's go all the way down here to about the phone. Here we can confirm that it is Android version 5.1 and this is definitely really 5.1 also with 64-bit support. But well, um, I can't find wireless update in here, so far nothing special. Then now let's quickly go here through the settings so I can show you all the features of the smartphone. And we have here Wi-Fi, I'm currently connected to my Wi-Fi network, but Wi-Fi seems to be kind of poor. Now usually I get a full signal, because, well, um, the router is in the next room, but here I only get good signal and it doesn't find the network of my neighbor. So um, Wi-Fi doesn't seem to be that good. We have Bluetooth, haven't tested it yet. Um, yeah, the rest is pretty much the same you can find on every other Android phone. There is no hot knot and there is no NFC. Okay, then let's go all the way down here. So we have here display and there is no mirror vision inside. Then here we have, for instance, motions and gestures. So we have air bras, air launcher set, and that works pretty good with the proximity sensor. So this is fully working. We have the apps and um, we can quickly check out apps running in the background. Now, as I've told you before, when we had a look at the specs, this phone here comes only with one gigabyte of RAM. So you see you have around 50% of the RAM used and you only have 500 megabytes for additional apps or games. So here you can see um, apps running in the background, nothing Chinese running here so far, so this looks pretty clean. Okay, um, then here we have different wallpapers, lock screen and security. As you can see, um, if we go here to the screen lock, there is no fingerprint unlock because fingerprint is not supported. Okay, so this is just a 
mechanical home button, absolutely nothing fancy. Then we have the accessibility, accounts, backup and reset, so the usual crap. Then here we have storage, and here you can see um, that we have 5.33 GB um, total space, where only 4 GB straight off the box are usable. A little bit more, um, because I have installed some apps, but not really much more. So you can use an SD card, there's also a second SD card. This is basically um, a second partition, so I didn't put in an SD card. And you see here you have 7.4 GB usable. That means um, there is one SD card in there which you could replace, but this is really hard to do because you have to heat up the whole backside and carefully remove the glass. But there's definitely an SD card inside, as I've seen um, like on a lot of other clones. Okay, regarding the battery stats, now the battery doesn't seem to be very good, so maximum a day of usage, I would say, but um, I can tell you more when I've done the Geekbench test in my full review. Okay, so that are basically the settings, and now you've seen all the features, so there's nothing too fancy in there. We also have an e-health application, which basically can scan your heart rate. This is fully working, but the numbers you get, I'm not really sure if you should trust them. Okay, here we have the proximity sensor recalibration, um, BLE manager, cool. And yeah, that's basically it. So you see um, many applications which you also find on the Real Galaxy 6 are pre-installed. Then I did some benchmarks here with the Antutu benchmark for instance. And the result is really not surprising. So we only get 20,000 points. This is very low because the CPU, well, it's only running at 1 gigahertz. Then here you can see, for instance, um, it's Android 5.1, real 64-bit support, HD resolution display. Then the rear camera, yeah, interpolated 60 megapixels. You will find samples in the full review on China devices. And you see the chipset only clocks from, so the CPU only clocks from 221 to around 1 gigahertz, which is a very low clock. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the Geekbench result. And here you will see once again that the score is very very low, so 476 and a bit more than 1000, so 1300 on multi core is definitely not a lot. And last but not least, um, CPU C, so there we go, so I can show you the sensors. And here you can see that it's definitely in quad core. We have here, um, for instance, the device info, so nothing fancy in here. Here the system settings, so system info, and here we can see there is no root access so far. Regarding the temperatures, everything cool right now, but um, let's see um, when we do some gaming and the full review. And if I cover the sensors, you see we have here um, accelerometer works proximity sensor. Seems to be kind of stuck because it's stuck at one centimeter. I probably have to recalibrate that um, to do the review. And the light sensor, well, changes the light um, the light density here a little bit slow. So we'll see if it works properly um, if I do some tests of the sensors then. Okay, so at the first look, it doesn't look really a lot better than any of those um, Galaxy S6 clones. But the good thing is um, it's a debranded version. So there's no Samsung logo on the smartphone. So what's the good thing? Yeah, it can't get stuck at customs. So here in Europe, um, I'm in Austria, and um, customs is pretty strict with those clones. But as long as there's, there's no logo on there, you shouldn't have a problem with those clones. So the, another good thing is that the dimensions are really one-to-one -one like the original ones. So you can get yourself, for instance, um, yeah, screen protector. You can get yourself a flip cover, case, whatever. And this will work with the um, fake here, too. So that's a pretty cool thing. So I will now do the review in the next days. Um, I have to do a Geekbench test, battery capacity test, some other tests, and I will probably dismantle this one here because um, it doesn't make sense to sell this one here because, well, um, it's a very cheap phone and I wouldn't get a lot of money. So I will do it for science and take it apart and maybe, yeah, um, give away the phone if it still lives after I put it back together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so thanks for watching this first look and unboxing. You can get this one here from efogshop.com. As always, there's a link down below in the description, so make sure you check it out. Have a nice day and see you soon in the full review. So bye bye.